So it's very important that in the future, if you want to really ensure our livelihoods, our agriculture, even uh, sustainable energy systems, then relying on renewable energy or promoting uh, to renewable energy is a very fundamental part. In saying that, of course, we, there's a lot of responsibilities on the part of the developed world to really lead into this process. But countries like Nepal or in Southeastern countries where poverty, energy poverty is also high, we can be a part of the solution as well. So it is important that we also like shift away from our fossil fuel based uh, economy. Let's say they are in generating electricity or let's say uses in the transport in the sector that can be produced from the abundantly uh, available uh, hydropower resources like, Indian, like Nepal or solar power or uh, wind energy that's abundantly available. If we switch in that, we're doing two things. One, we're trying to rely on a green, clean energy that is sustainable as well. But at the same time, we're tackling climate change and helping being a part of the solution. When you talk about the energy transition, we do take uh, into account the uh, energy poverty in our countries. For instance, in our country, around 70% uh, of the people still rely on biomass energy for cooking, for probably lighting and other aspects. So in, in, uh, in, uh, in this particular context, without taking into account the poor communities who are living in isolated areas, geographical areas, you know, it's fair. So in fact, in order to transition from fossil fuel to clean energy, taking them into confidence, you know, indigenous people or vulnerable climate, uh, climate vulnerable communities, taking them into confidence and helping them part of the solution so they can be a part of the solution. We're, we're doing a couple of things. One, we're trying to address poverty, that is in general for everyone. But at the same time, we're also trying to address uh, energy poverty where these people can have access to uh, clean, green uh, energy and be a part of the solution. What you can do is, first of all, not every energy system has to be you know, connected to the national grid or the main grid. We can have many grids, uh, uh, mini grids, in, uh, or let's say the isolated grid system in rural areas that will help them provide them uh, sustainable energy systems. You know, this is very key. Otherwise, like, if you're thinking about only really doing it for a national system, it may not be feasible in a geographically very isolated communities in countries like Nepal, where you have mountains, hills, and very difficult. So in that particular context, the renewable energy is one, it's easy to transport. Like for instance, solar uh, panels can be transported. Probably they can be, you know, uh, contextualized little small wind power systems. Or in the case of Nepal, we have many hydro and small hydro systems where communities themselves can be a custodian of these uh, small uh, energy grid system. So that is very key. Well, for us, what we can see, at least from the experience from Nepal and many of the parts in South Asia and Asia is, there is high poverty. And one of the poverty issues is also related to the energy access. Not having energy access means you are not able to really uh, have, uh, you have to rely your uh, cooking into, into biomass or you are not able to do enterprises, you are not able to process or store your agricultural products that is in, in rural areas. So having access to these energy systems will help in several other these uh, uh, issues related to poverty. Not just that, you know, students can have uh, education system in the nights and in the evenings or let's say in the early mornings. You can have helpers will have access to uh, having uh, helpers having access to uh, electricity means you can have better facilities in the in the local helper system. So it is connected quite a bit, like in you know, health, education, agricultural production, enterprises. So this is all about addressing uh, poverty and basic needs of the communities. Well, first we'll have to take into account that. Uh, you know, transitioning from biomass or fossil fuel based economy will take time in a country like ours where government and everybody is really working hard to address poverty. But in order to do that, it, can, it may not happen overnight. It may not happen like uh, change in, in a couple of years. But taking this pathway saying that we will include communities and the transition is a very fundamental part. But in that particular sense, first, instead of you know, providing gas for cooking, we provide e cooking to probably mini gates or providing, you know, uh, if they are doing already on fire cooking or collecting firewood for them, and probably giving them electricity or giving them clean cooking options is the best way that we can transition from, uh, uh, you know, uh, fossil fuel based uh, cooking system or biomass based system to clean uh, cooking and other uses of the electricity, or the energy, I would say.